The Whipping Club, Over Black, Card, Castleborough Mother Baby Home, Ireland, 1957. Barely audible, muffled, a distressed Marion McKeever in labor speaks with a willowy nun, Sister Paulinus. I need to lie down. You need nothing of the sort. This is the fastest way for the baby to come down. Oh God, <laughs> please! It's a little late to be asking God for anything. Nurse, see that she doesn't disturb the new mothers. And keep her on the commode. Sister Paulina's heavy footsteps fade behind a door slam. I'll help you to the bed. Marion's breaths come high and sharp between moans, pushing, grunting, then a bright light and a baby cries. Interior, Castleboro Mother Baby Home, Birthing Room, Day. We see only the crying newborn Adrian Ellis, bald, discolored, slick, and what's directly around him. He's cleaned up and swaddled by a stooped woman in a blue smock, nurse, 30, only her arms visible. Hands Adrian, too, his young mother, Marion, 24, but we don't see her face, just her long red hair and freckled arms holding him. Adrian calms, snuffled breaths. His mother weeps, touches his cheek, head, examines his fingers as... Hello. I'll bring some hot sweet tea. As nurse's footsteps hurry away. Nurse? Nurse, did you mail my letter to Ben? Nurse? Interior, Castleboro Mother Baby Home. Day room, day. Two-week-old Adrian nurses at Marion's breast. We still don't see her face, just him. Can I burp him? Sign here. Marion hastily signs consenting documents, hands Adrian to nurse in her blue frock, bent as if she's cowered too many times. She whispers to her, Be strong now. And hurries away with Adrian in a whirlwind of white habits. Nurse? No! Where are you going? Marion screams and Adrian cries. Willowy sister Paulinus, 51, snatches Adrian. In her white sleeves, she rushes him away, barely hearing. You said I had two years! Adrian! Interior, farmhouse bedroom, night. Blanched and moist, four-month-old baby Adrian cries in his new crib. The shaky farmer's wife, thirties, of whom we see bits and bobs, picks him up, bounce walks him around her room. It's been months of this, love. The farmer's strong hands tear Adrian out of his wife's arms, place him back in the crib. Hints of a tussle as the wife tries to stop her husband. He drags the crib out of the room. Adrian is left alone in the hall. His arms stretch out of the crib, grabbing at the air. We hear the farmer soothe his wife in their room. Their door slams closed. Adrian keeps crying. Interior, farmer's car, day. Adrian cries, quieter, on the wife's lap in the passenger seat, clutched by her arms. The wiper slip slap until the car stops and the engine turns off. It's quiet. A kiss to his head before the farmer's hands extract Adrian from his wife. Exterior, Castleboro Mother Baby Home, moments later. It drizzles on Adrian. He blinks at the drops, crying, facing away from the farmer who carries him, barely visible. His footsteps crunch the gravel. For the first time, we see something other than Adrian. Several rundown buildings, barred windows, and an ancient chapel. They pass two pregnant girls sweeping, hear children singing. Adrian quiets and turns as if he recognizes it. Young pregnant women in worn smocks and mantillas sweetly sing, led by nuns into the chapel. Adrian squirms when he's unable to see them and cries again. The farmer stops, hands Adrian to a nun. We recognize her as Sister Paulinus, but she won't touch him. Nurse, in the blue frock, takes him. Interior, Castleboro Mother Baby Home, Baby Room, Day. Crimson cheeks, one-year-old Adrian sits in a high chair, chubbier among babies. The bowed nurse feeds them gruel. When it's Adrian's turn, nurse puts tiny bits of sausage on his spoon. He's eager for it, knows it's coming. Interior, Silver Bridge Orphanage, Baby Dormitory, Day. Entering the room is eight-year-old Adrian, a ginger with freckles now. He sneaks to grandmotherly sister Deidre, fifties, as she feeds the babies. Super, Silver Bridge Orphanage, 1965. She smiles as he opens his mouth. She feeds him a treat, a spoonful of goodie. 
He's found another friend. Adrian hugs Deirdre. She kisses his head, pinches those cheeks. 